Hey everyone, it's Pastor Brian Ross from Grace Life Bible Church in Grand Rapids, Michigan. We want to welcome you to this video and to our YouTube channel here. We appreciate you tuning in as always. If you haven't already done so, if you would consider subscribing and ringing the alarm bell as a way of staying current with the ministry when we go live from the assembly building on Sunday morning, as well as when we create content for you here midweek, we would certainly appreciate that. I also want to remind you about our Rumble channel here, Grace Life Bible Church on Rumble. We established this as an alt tech site should something happen to our YouTube ministry. So if you're into alt tech sites or just like an alternative to YouTube, please consider subscribing and checking us out here on Rumble as well. The point of my video here uh, is going to be short, and I want to talk about two things that are well or long overdue for me to talk about. Uh, this month, the month of July 2023, I've been doing a lot of traveling um, my family took a vacation uh, earlier in the month, and then I was in the Chicago at the Chicago uh, Bible Conference last week, and so I just haven't had the time to record and get information out the way that I normally would. So what I want to talk about in this video is two things. The first thing I want to talk about is announcing the publication of my new book. This came out earlier this month, early July 2023. And that is the preservation of God's word, or excuse me, from this generation forever, a study of God's promise to preserve his word. And this is volume two. And this is based on the notes that were passed out and taught from, from my From This Generation Forever class. And this would be the second segment or term of the class where we focused on the doctrine of preservation. So all the notes that were distributed have been edited and gone through and published in volume two, preservation. Last summer, we put out volume one on the doctrine of inspiration. And so the plan, Lord willing, is for every year to add one more edition in this series until we have everything in print. Those of you who are following this channel, you know that I'm still adding to this series too. I'm trying to decide how much longer I'm going to be doing that. Um, so at least in the near future, the plan is to hopefully put out one volume in this series every year until we have completed that process. Now, volume two, The Doctrine of Preservation, this is a 388-page book, 378-page book, excuse me, devoted solely to explaining the doctrine of preservation. Preservation is an attack doctrine. Uh, many don't believe it, and we deal with all of those issues in this book let me go through the table of contents quickly if i could so that you know something about what's in this so this picks up with lesson 28 lessons 1 through 27 are in volume 1 so we have an introduction to preservation we talk about the various views of preservation we talk about and then we examine the relevant passages pertaining to the doctrine of preservation so we look at psalm 12 6 and 7 we look at psalm 119 isaiah 30 verse 8 we look at isaiah 4 40 verse 8 and 2 Peter 1 23 through 25. We look at Matthew 4 4 in two parts. And then we also look at Matthew 24 35. So we go through all the relevant passages pertaining to the doctrine of preservation. Then we look at preservation, faith, and the promise of God. We look at why preservation matters. And then we get into this very important discussion about the corollary. Of between inspiration and preservation, and we spend quite a bit of time going through that. I lay out my arguments for why preservation does not require verbatim identicality of wording. We looked at passages proving plenary preservation is presumptuous, and we spend a lot of time looking at Matthew 5, 17, 18. That's the verse about the jots and the tittles. Uh, that is talked about very uh, in depth here in two lessons final thoughts on the corollary, and then we get into the method and process of preservation. Was preservation providential or miraculous in Lesson 47? Lesson 48, what was the process of preservation, the multiplicity of copies? And then we from there, we have two lessons on that. The process, we talk about the people of preservation, both in the Old Testament and the New Testament. And we talk about ways, we, we talk about the, this is important, Lesson 54, we talk about the simultaneous nature of preservation and corruption, how both were occurring at the same time. The question of access and availability, which helps settles where, and identifying the preserved text in history. And then we offer concluding thoughts on preservation. So the book is quite lengthy. It deals in great detail in with subject matters that, um, 
maybe dealt with in other places, but just maybe not to the level of depth that I try to cover them here uh, in in these notes or in this book. So if this is a topic that you're interested in, potentially this would be good information. They're they're uh, in sort of bulleted form, and they could easily be adapted for a Sunday school class, uh, for preaching, for teaching from. Uh, if one was interested in doing that. So I want to make it available. There will be a link in the description where you can order this book direct for the publisher. And I will also put a link in the description for uh, the link on Amazon. We are still working on finalizing the Kindle format of this book. So those of you that are overseas or might be interested but are going to struggle to maybe get the physical copy of the book, we're working on trying to get a Kindle uh, edition also. So there'll be a link in the description to both where you can order direct from the publisher here, Dispensational Publishing House, or where you can ultimately get, get, get a Kindle format as well. So we're excited about this book and uh, we commend it to you. Hopefully you're interested in it. Please consider picking up a copy. It is uh, $20. I feel like that's not a, I feel like that's a fair price given the length of the book and the amount of information that is covered therein. The second thing I want to talk about is make an announcement regarding the 2023 West Michigan Grace Bible Conference. This is our annual Bible conference at Grace Life Bible Church. We are having the meeting here. You can see October 20, 21, and 22. It's going to be at the church. The speakers this year are Brother David Reed from Columbus Bible Church in Ohio, Brother Matt Hawley from Miami Valley Bible Church in Ohio, and also myself, um, those are our speakers. Our theme is leading a quiet and peaceable life in a world gone crazy. I've been getting a lot of questions from people in the assembly about different things that are going on and how we should be thinking about these matters as believers today. So we start off on Friday night with two messages. The first one is nationalism versus globalism, the great struggle of our time. I'm going to be bringing that message. And then the second message, Friday night, will be Dominion Theology, a scriptural evaluation of post-millennial theology. Brother Dave Reed is going to bring that. We resume Saturday morning, October 21st at 9 a.m. with the Sermon on the Mount and Progressive Christianity. Matt Hawley is going to cover that topic. 1015, Awake Thou That Sleepest, so we'll play on Ephesians 5 there, The Wokeism That Matters. I'm going to be delivering that message. And then we'll end the morning that Saturday with providing for one's own, the believer in the workplace with David Reed bringing that message. Then we have a break for lunch, afternoon. People can sightsee, take a nap, do whatever they desire to do in the, in the afternoon. And then we come back in the evening for prepping media and scripture, assessing the battle for your family. Matt Hawley is going to take that. We will have a concert put on by the Grace Bible Church uh, Praise Band and Ice Cream Fellowship following that evening study. And then we will resume on Sunday, October 23 at 9 a.m. Politics, Prison, and Paul, Civic Engagement and Scripture. Matt Hawley is going to bring that message. And then we will end the weekend with The Quiet and Peaceable Life in a World Gone Crazy by Brother David Reed. And then the church will provide lunch um, following that study. So there's no cost to attend any of these meetings other than a suggested donation for lunch on Saturday. Anyone is welcome to attend. Visitors are encouraged. Out-of-town visitors, please note that hotel arrangements have not been organized in advance by Grace Life Bible Church. If you're coming from a distance and would like a hotel recommendation, please contact us. We'll be happy to uh, point you in the right direction as far as where you might be able to stay in the area. If you're coming from out of town, if you would uh, like assistance with that. And then please note that there's no child care children's ministry on Friday or Saturday. We will have our normal Sunday morning kids classes, but Friday and Saturday, there is nothing offered as far as children's programming. So the reason for that is we just, we don't have a very large church and we don't have the personnel to be able to uh, pull that off uh, with any level of success. So we will be having our normal uh, children's ministry on Sunday that we would normally have given week to week. So we'd like to encourage you to consider coming out October 21, uh, 2021, 22 to Michigan and being a part of this conference. It should be a great time of studying fellowship in God's word. Very pertinent topics related to things that believers have questions about and are struggling with today, given our current cultural situation and where things are at in, in our country and where we stand 
as members of the church, the body of Christ, trying to lead a quiet and peaceable life, given the current cultural situation and standing that we have. So we'd love to have you, number one, pick up a copy of the book if you're so inclined, and number two, have you come to the conference. Should be a great time. If you have any questions about either the book or the conference, please reach out. We'd be happy to answer your questions. Um, so before you go, just want to remind you, God loves you. Christ died for your sin. Jesus Christ went to the cross, shed his blood in payment for your sin, was buried, rose again the third day. God is ready, willing, and able to give anybody who trusts the finished work of his son, his death, burial, and resurrection, as the only total complete payment for sin. He's ready to, and willing to give you eternal life as a free gift. Trust Jesus Christ today before it's everlasting. Too late. Thanks for your time, and we'll see you later in the week with another video.